Hello and welcome to the Fools Russian STFC podcast. I am your host as ever and I am joined by five gentlemen who are in great voice and great humour this evening. Uh, Kieran is with us, how are you pal? Yeah, not too bad Steve, yeah. Yeah, very good, thank you. We've also got Ben with us. Easy Steve, how you doing? Very well, thank you. We've got Craig who since he was last on is another year older. Yeah, I'm really enjoying being 31, mate. It's going fast. <laughs> <laughs> Which, <laughs> Which I thought you were talking about. <laughs> uh, the man who's after my job, Woody's back with us as well. Evening. And Warren makes up the crew for tonight. How are you, pal? Evening, gents. Uh, lads, it seems to have been a little while since we've done one of these with, with life getting in the way for just about all of us. Um, so it's nice to see you all today. Uh, let's recap where we were. The last time we all got together was deadline day. Um, and since then, there have been three games. We had the one all with Stevenage beating Arsenal's uh, kid squad 2-1. And then, obviously, at the weekend, the, the narrow defeat to Port Vale. Um, Craig, I'll come to you first. What what's, have you taken from, from the three performances? Or is there something in particular from any of those games that you wanted to pull out? Obviously, I miss uh, Grant. I do um, that? That was pretty much evident, especially against um, Port Vale. Um, I, you know, I said a little while ago in our group chat that we need someone to, who could cover him. I, I mean, I know we've got like Jordan Lydon and Ryan East who could so say fill in for him, but I don't think they're quite the same players. And we were vulnerable defensively on on Saturday, and uh, not just at the back, but in midfield, it, we, they just seemed to be able to cut through us and I, I'd imagine that if um, Grant had been had been in that midfield it would it might have been a uh, a different story um but I mean we're still I mean the, the the game on Saturday that's the first game I've actually been to um this season and um I you know it was quite I always felt we could get something out of it which is not always been the case with Swindon teams like under I know the, the, there's comparisons between Ghana and Williams style but under Williams I didn't think we would score Whereas under Garner, under Garner, I feel that we do. You know, we, we really missed um, Johnny Williams when he came off. I, I felt we lacked a bit of bite after he after he was subbed on Saturday. Obviously, he's not match fit yet. But um, but yeah, so it, it was promising watching the game and feeling like we could get something out of it. I really thought we could have got you know got a draw out of it. So that is that is promising. But um, I think. This is the second time, as I said to you, Ben, on um, on Twitter, this is the second time a team has come to the county ground with a plan, Carlisle being the first one, and um, we haven't had a response to it. They they played their game, they you know, and, and we just couldn't, you know, Ghana couldn't find a way to tactically change things around mm. to try and counter. And, um, you know, for all what we say about how Port Vale played the game, they did what they were best at and they got the, the three points. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was going to say, Ben. Leading on from that, is is that something you're concerned about? Because on the one hand, Craig's pointed out that it's not the first time that we haven't sort of had that that alternative plan. But ultimately, something must be going right because you know he was he was nominated for manager of the month. Well, yeah, um, I think our best performances have probably come away from home. Um, I think it's uh, it is a concern more at home than away. Um, I think when we're going forwards and building up our attacks, we're quite slow. Um, Bale came with a game plan. They knew exactly what they would do. They're well drilled. They, they could let us have the ball uh, in non-threatening areas. Uh, they pressed hard. They slowed down the game whenever they could. You know, they were time wasting from the first ten minutes, which was part of the game. So they didn't want us to have any momentum. And it just was perfect for them. Apart from the goal we scored, it was the perfect away day. And, you know, no one can take away their victory because they deserved it. Now, that's something that we need to overcome. We do need another Grant in midfield um, because um, with Grant, because <clears throat> when the small moments we did have, because we did get behind them, we did create some chances, but we didn't ever have that period of pressure where we were on top of them for five, ten minutes. And there's times that they won the second ball all the time. And there's times when we do attack and then Grant win it back and then we'll back at them. And that didn't happen. Um, so we've got a problem because um, Grant's going to be missing for Northampton. 
but he's going to be called up for Jamaica, Jamaica a lot, I feel. So we're going to be missing for a lot. One point I want to make, how come Antonio played this weekend for West Ham? Got himself sent off. He's in my fancy team and Grant couldn't. Uh, I, I can't answer that, in all honesty. Uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, <laughs> Adam's so got... Uh... My fancy team. And he, was like, he played it so I go, hang on. Isn't he playing for Jamaica as well? So uh, what, why is Grant isolating? But yet yeah, the West Ham player, Antonio, can play this weekend. What, 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 they got, they got special dispensation. For well, it's probably <laughs> under the same sort of made-up law as all the Brazilians that got arrested, but they were allowed to play. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just because like, West Ham have got better money. It's sort of like, here you go, Boris. It's a little brown paper bag. Let Antonio play. Thank you. Kiwa Ruth played as well at Rangers. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, but I think they didn't play. They didn't play the second. They didn't play the third game, did they? There's a lot of them that didn't play the third game. So they it might be the third game. The days don't. The days don't add up with it. I give you that. But I think there was there was something with them being able to go to Jamaica that the Premier League players and higher players could play. And if they didn't play the third game, so Anthony mm. Grant obviously then gets done in that, and we get shafted for it. Uh, yeah. Bringing it back to the the Swindon results since we last met, uh, Warren, I will ask you. Whether it's win, lose or draw, the important thing at the minute, it's still a squad finding its feet, still a squad developing with each other. You know, when you look at the results, 1-0, 2-1 and 1-2, you know, they're close results. It's not like we're being absolutely hammered at any point. There's no reasons really for people to be overly concerned at this point, is there? No, I feel feel like we're only going to get better. Um, Is that mine? Sorry, guys. It's all right. It's all right. Now. It's, it was it's just, yeah, talking. Talking. I can hear you. Oh, perfect. We're only going to get better. Do you know what I mean? I, you, we all forget that we're still technically a few weeks behind. We had a lot of players come in late. Um, mm. Yeah, the, there's always going to be that excuse. Um, I think we've been playing some decent style of football. It's nice to see us. We've got a brand, a, a style that we're going to continue to play. I agree with what the chaps say, that it's concerning that there doesn't seem to be no plan B. It seems to be if plan A doesn't work, where are we going to go to? Um, But like you say, we've done ourselves proud in the games. I thought Saturday, I thought even so, at one all, it looked like we were in the ascendancy. And if Simpson's chance goes in, it could have been, it would have been a completely different scoreline, wouldn't it, obviously? But... Yeah, I think there's plenty of positives to take. I think, you know what I mean? We're playing a decent brand and it's a lot better than last year, isn't it? Mm. Oh, without question. Um, Kieran, th- this mention of of a the mythical plan B, is that as much d- down to options as much as, as tactical knowledge? You know, that there was that big clamour for a AN other proper striker that we didn't get in the transfer window? Yeah, I think with this squad, it's difficult to play any other ways than your nice football than, than you're playing. And you need you need almost those players off the bench that can be impact players that can go and do the dirty job. And I say we miss Grant um, this this Saturday in doing that role. He does the dirty bits. Else. Um, but in like it, yeah, another obviously we've seen it in the Carlisle game. He, they they came with a game plan, and Port Vale have mirrored their game plan which was frustrate us, waste time and try and get one or two lucky goals, you might get a draw out of it at, wor- at best or at worst. And you, you probably, you might get a win out of it. Or if you do, you're not going to get hammered. Um, but I think, yeah, we, we need maybe different players to be able to play a plan B. I think this level, it's difficult to teach your players to play two different ways. Um, you can, Premier League, you can do it. And you've got bigger squads and everything like that. In League Two, you've got to be realistic and you've got to do it but sometimes you have just got to go route one over the top and have we got the players to do it have we got we need to you need two out and out strikers sometimes you need maybe one that can hold it up for Simpson to come in for him like we saw with Doyle and Yates one player a bit deeper to do that but time will tell Um, you never know who you can develop into doing those players and I think if you get another game like that where someone comes and frustrates you again wasting time after 10 minutes you need to look at what they're doing you need to realise that that's going to be a majority of teams that come down this level like your Port Vale's Carlisle's probably even a Scunthorpe when they come down here later in the season your Oldham's the the traditional like League 2 teams will come and frustrate you the newer age League 2 teams less so because they'll come and they'll play similar to what we're playing 
but the the older teams and, and your Forest Greens, well, they've always done that to us. I think whenever they've come to the county grounds, they've always tried to play that way as well. And uh, Adam, there, there's still plenty of, of good stuff for, for all the the frustrations that some fans have when you look at, for example, the, the Vale game. There's still plenty of good stuff going on. What what have you seen that's impressed you, whether it's shape wise, you know, um, possession in play, that kind of thing? Um, I think, to be honest, the, as Warren alluded to earlier about like the fact that we're still, I don't want to keep saying we're a young squad in terms of uh, immaturity of being together, but we're st- we're, we've managed to pick up a brand of football really quickly. Um, you know, yes, I kind of agree with Ben that maybe at home we're a bit slower for some reason. Um, I don't really know why that could be. Um, to be honest, I'm just impressed at the fact that we haven't got spanked every game and we're still yet to receive a spanking. Um, you know, I think it's difficult. You look, do we need a striker? Yeah, you might say we need another striker, but then at the same time, there's only two games this season we haven't scored in, um, you know, and they've all been close games. So are we going to be a bit of a, you know, a 1-0, 2-1 team? Um, I think reflecting on Port Vale more than anything, I think Port Vale was comfortably the worst performance we've had this season, in my opinion. Um, I don't, I thought I thought that was our worst performance of the season. Um, and ironically, what was quite good about the Arsenal game what I quite liked was it did actually show that we do have some strength in backup I know it's only Arsenal under 21s and all this kind of stuff but it's still a game of football at the end of the day and it's still we're we're effectively trying to put out as much as our B team in that game as Arsenal putting out their under 21s you know we've the last few seasons we're getting beaten by Chelsea we're getting beaten by West Ham under 21s so although Arsenal were very questionable I went to the game but although Arsenal were very questionable you know, even the even the backup, we were, you know, we were pretty good. You know, we're, you know I liked that Dabre. Um, I'd like to see him give him a couple of chances. Um, you know, and uh, and Ag- Ag- Agua, I think his name's pronounced. He was he looked pretty pretty sharp, and obviously we saw Ad- more of Odomeo in that game. And you think of these names that are coming back, Leiden, all of that kind of stuff. If Leiden's in that game on Saturday in in place for Grant, we we would have won it. Um, I, I, I fundamentally believe on Saturday it is our lack of it was our lack of Anthony Grant because we had too many attacking minded players in midfield um, and and we can do anything. But on the flip side of that, like going back to your original question about what I'm impressed about is when we are attacking, we do look like we're going to score. Like it always looks like we're going to score. You know, Simpson's so much better, and that's that's a player that's really impressed me now. That to have the confidence to take that shot from outside the area. That, that deserved a goal, you know, and I'm surprised the ref didn't give it because the amount of decisions he did get wrong. I'm surprised he didn't he didn't say it across the line or something. But overall, the team cohesion, you know, we're playing as a team. We're looking good. Everybody's playing with a smile on their face and all this kind of stuff. But equally, we lost on Saturday and every player just dropped to the floor. And I think sometimes fans appreciate that because you can see how much it hurts that we've lost that game. Um, when we know that we were the better team, but Port Vale's game plan mastered us. No, absolutely. And and I think you're right. I think for the most part, the fans do recognise the situation. And as you alluded to, they they appreciate the feeling from, from the players and, and the staff when, when these things don't necessarily go to plan. Um, on the subject of fans, let, let's move on to, to happy or, or continue the theme of happy things. Uh, it was announced that we've sold out the allocation for Northampton. Have, have any of you managed to, to get tickets? Are you going? Good advertisement. <laughs> what, a yes. great, what a great oh, fans oh, panel we are. Fans. <laughs> <laughs> You're all fucking shit I know, fans. I know, I know Rich is I going. I do, I do know Rich is going. So one of one of us is going. Rich is going. Right. There is one member of the pod going. He'll have a full match report for us from the next pod because the rest of us are shit and decided not to go. Well, <laughs> Frampton's not the same unless it's a cold Tuesday night <laughs> or, or, or a Boxing or Day or New Year's, New, Year's, New, Year's, New Year's Eve. You've got the Canio running on the pitch. It's obviously, right? it's obviously a, a massive effort from the fans to, to sell out the allocation. So, so uh, you know, congratulations to all those that have got tickets and, and hopefully it will be a very good game. We've heard some sort of team news coming out. The likes of McCurdy won't be available. We know Grant won't be there. Um, 
but going into it, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the order as you, as you appear on my screen. Kieran, are you confident? Um, yeah, I think we're always traditionally better away from home. Um, like we've got this curse on the county ground. I think we alluded to it a bit last season, but there is just, I've always felt more confident in a game away from home than I ever have done at home in a lot of things. Um, so I think, I think we'll go there. I think I can see us, I can, we'll walk away with at least a point, I think. I can't see us walk away with anything, anything less. Um, but I think we'll go for the win. I think we saw it after like, the likes of when we beat, uh, got lost to Carlisle and stuff. I think it will sort of spur us on. And sometimes these, you, sometimes you need a loss in a squad because it had been going very well for us. Um, so I think we need we need a loss sometimes just to sort of spirit us on and go for it. And our away support is we've always had good away support. Like even when in bad times, we've always taken to these sort of games. We always take a thousand. Like London, we always as well. Like games in London, we always take about a thousand too. We've always had really good away support. And I think our support from home is better because everyone's in one place. And it's, it'll be, so I think that'll make a difference as well. Um, and I'll put I reckon we'll, we'll go there and win two 0 Nice, Ben. What are you thinking? He's on mute. Ben, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Is that there better? Down. Yeah, no, I think I, I think the same as Kieran. Um, I think uh, uh, I think we'll go there, win 2-0. I, I think playing away from home suits us a little bit better because uh, the home team have to come at us a little bit and because we hold and retain the ball and we'll they'll create pockets of space for uh, uh, Gilberto and old... Uh, 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 and uh, Williams, forgot his name for a second. So just to hit them and hurt them, uh, I think. Um, yeah, I, I think I think we'll win two now. I think we'll frustrate him. I think we'll retain the ball, and I think uh, I think we're back to winning ways. I'm really liking this positivity, guys. How about you, Adam? Uh, yeah, and sorry, I forgot to mention how good Gilbert I thought was on Saturday as well. But um, yeah, I think I think we'll win. Um, I think uh, it, I, we just. It seems like Northampton, they are in quite good form at the moment, I think, as well. But I, I just, I feel we might nick it. It might be a 1-0 again. Um, I do think we're frustrated. We are better on the road, which sets us up nicely for October. Um, we've, I think we've got heart over 75% of the games are away in October. Um, but yeah, but either way, Northampton, I think we'll nick it 1-0. I think Simpson will get on the score sheet again. My boy, my boy Simpson, as I'm going to call him now. Your boy Simpson. Uh, Warren, how are you feeling ahead of Northampton? Um, I would take a draw. I, I can't know someone like Adam just said, I think they're in good form. I, I, they're a t it's a tough place to go. They're always, we've just come back a game with Port Vale where they were physical and we struggled. And I think it'll be the same again. I think it'll be exactly how they'll set us up. It'll be difficult. To, they'll be difficult to beat. Um, and I think that's how it will go. Um, I'd like to see us play free at the back again. I, I didn't like the four on Saturday. I thought it was it left us way too open down the centre of the pitch. The centre halves were miles apart from each other, and I think it just gives us that little bit more balance when we're um, when we've got that free solid base at the back, um, and it, it may help us put another player further up the top end of the pitch, or maybe get Gilbert up alongside Simpson. And then we've got that free base in the middle of the park as well. So, but I would take a draw. But like I say, I love the confidence and let's hope we nick it. And where do you stand on this, Craig? Are you take a draw? Are you back three or back four? Sorry, just bear with me a sec, Steve. <laughs> he's, he's been sat there oh. patiently the whole time waiting to be there invited into the conversation. <laughs> Well, I just thought I'd better get my hat on because uh, Kieran was saying I was looking miserable. So every time I look at this hat, I, look, I feel happy again. So. I love that hat. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm sort of similar to, to Kieran. I, I think we could get a, a draw there. Um, Northampton, they've, they've kept kept quite a few clean sheets so far. So it might be difficult for us to break them down. But, but you know, like, like we've been saying, we, we do look so good going forward. I hope um, Johnny Williams starts again. And, and, and like Adam was saying, Gilbert was one of the bright sparks from, uh, from the Port Vale game. He, you know, and I hope that him and um, uh, Kessler Hayden are given sort of a bit of license to take players on, you, you know, because they, they just look so dangerous. And um, defenders at this level, they hate players like that, that are going to run at them and take them on and make them look silly. So, I think if we can get a, a point, ideally, obviously, a win. But I think, uh, I think realistically, uh, we'll, we'll probably get a point. 
And um, sticking with you, Craig, that, let's have a look at something off the field. Um, we we all obviously very happy with the outcome with with Clem coming in, and there's been one hell of a, a media tour, if you like, and a social media storm. Now we've reached the point where he, I believe he's actually gone back now to Australia. I think he's actually gone back. Um, is it time that everything just settles down and, and it's all about the football now? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I kind of think so. I, I mean, what, what he's done, he's, he's got the club engaged with the community again. You know, everyone's talking about Swindon and people are getting involved with the club, you know, who might not have been bothered before. And, you know, we're always going to have that core of support like ourselves who, who will go to games when we can. But he's with his promotion around the, you know, touring around the town, his photos with kids and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's really, it's, it's been a huge thing. I've, I, I don't, you know, I don't know of any other owner that's done that in this, in, in, in this country. That's, that's for sure. And uh, it's been a really uh, positive thing. So I, I, I hope he does come back every now and then. Um, as I said before, maybe not in the stands, you know, because just in case for his sake, if things start to go sour and, you know, if, you know, you know, you know, f fans are fickle, and our fans are just as fickle as en any others. So. Yeah, we don't, we don't want to go in Mike Ashley, do we? Yeah, yeah, pr precisely. So, um, so, so, yeah, but yeah, we're, I mean, maybe once he's gone, we can, you know, we can concentrate on the football. But hopefully, he'll he'll pop back when he's oh, uh, when he's able to. I'm, I'm sure his missus is uh, looking forward to having him uh, having him back home after a long absence. So, so I hope he enjoys his his time back. I think he is planning to come back at Christmas, I think. Yeah, he's planning on coming back at Christmas. But one thing he said about us core fans coming to it, I think this is the first time in our first four home games in 27 seasons we've had crowds of above 8,000 in our opening league games, which goes on. Because I've always remembered our support sort of bobbing around Seven, seven and a half thousand on an average attendance. Eight thousand used to be. Oh, cool, we got Plymouth or someone, or like sort of a bit yeah. decent. Then the bigger attendances for your Oxford and Rovers and stuff. But like eight thousand at home for Port Vale. I think the closest we got that for a game like that was possibly the League Two winning title uh, game where we had about eight nine thousand there. And you look at eight thousand for Carlisle at home. So that's that's volumes of. I've never seen numbers for like those normally mediocre games unless there's something on them towards the end of the season so that's a lot of credit goes into that especially and I think it's the first time in 27 seasons in one of our lowest divisions that we've been in I know we've been here before but for, for a league two as well that's absolutely incredible yeah I think I think as well though you, I mean 8,000 at that level like you said is, is brilliant and I remember when when we've been in the second tier we've never really averaged much more than 10,000 so if, if he did get us into the championship I could see us selling out the you know the county ground every week which which even yeah. you know even under Glenn Hoddle and Ozzy Ardiles and Lou Macari we, we that never happened you know we, we might have the odd derby game where we sell out but it was normal I, I don't remember the, game, the, the, the games having more than 10,000. He's finally doing the thing that because Swindon has got such a vast area of like support the, the club should have a bigger support it's got a, it's a yeah. big tap and a lot of people I know that support Swindon don't come from Swindon either like a lot of people I know that I can, I've never lived in Swindon um, I've come from like the, the sort of surrounded Chippenham and Malmesbury areas and a lot of people come from the Melksham areas Sirencester areas even further afield than that I know some that have been have moved some of them of course have moved away but if you look at like the local areas the people that they've just gone because that's the nearest big team they've gone there instead of going to Rovers and City and stuff and over the last couple of years more have gone to sort of City for their sins but like we're actually tapping in we need Clem's doing what someone's needed to do for a long time tap into the ones in in the wider area as well because he's doing that he's getting them into the town but also tap into the ones that you've got in the town you've got a big town and you've got that it's an easily accessible football club for them. It's sort of affordable to at least go to what a couple of games now and then. And he's finally doing that by just getting out there. It's it's not been hard. And you say as well, sponsorships as well that he's managed to get in. We've got a training top sponsor on the sleeve, which is like for this level again is incredible. Um, but it shows it's, it can be done. And he's then I think today we've come up with we've got a Wow Hydrate have become our official drinks partner, and they're going to sponsor the whole of the academy as well. So again it's amazing work by him and everyone behind the scenes that are doing stuff like that to get more revenue into the club so we can go forward no i completely agree with that and ben um one of the other things that came out recently is something that we've spoke about 
three or four times, I think, in these in these um, podcast conversations that the, the return of the tickets for school kids I saw was announced yeah. two days ago as well. Yeah, no, no, that's superb. That's superb. We need to get kids whilst they're young. They get in, tell mum and dad how much of a great time they had and they can, so they can take them. This is what I did with my dad when I was a little kid and I went to go see my first game. You know, I, I came with South Cerny and I became a fan that way. And I think it's a great thing. Uh, yeah, the club... We always lose this, though, don't we? In recent history, club. in recent history, we've always lost that game though. <laughs> yeah. Every time we give kids tickets away, we tend to lose. <laughs> yeah, there was one where we had the Stratton Bank for a load when we think we lost to like, it might be, or we might have like drawn to like Steven, it might be like Stevenage or so, and it was horrendous. But that's how I got into sport and sport. I didn't even like football before I went to my first game and I won tickets to Swindon Warsaw where we got promoted, won the game. Uh, that was a school competition thing, like kick the races, that thing. But if I'd never won that, I'd never even liked football possibly. And I don't know what I'd have done in my life. Probably be a lot less stressed. Um, <laughs> be happier. But like that's so the school kids thing, giving 500, I think they'd give like a whole block of the Don Rogers to it. And if we do that most, even once a month or sort of thing, they will nag, and that's like nag their mum and dad's at least if, even if 10 of them do, that's still 20 tickets we sold then in the future. Yeah, yeah. In the spring, open up the bank, that sort of thing. Yeah, do it. No, absolutely. And um, Warren, uh, we sort of mentioned it earlier um, while we're on the theme of, of positives, but uh, there was the Manager of the Month nomination. Um, and, and I think there was some surprise maybe that JJ didn't get in or particularly high in, in the Player of the Month vote. But credit has to be given for even being in the nominations this early when you consider where we were at the start of the uh, at the start of the season. A hundred percent. And like he said, it's all come down to everyone in the club. And I think Garner mentioned that when he got nominated, he said this has been a massive club effort from the top all the way down to the players, the staff, you know, what I mean, to get even to have a team on the pitch, you know, and like Adam said earlier, not getting spanked every week. But it's a massive achievement to start with. Like I say, he's just got a we've got to just find that way of just getting through these teams. Cause like they say, they're going to look at the result from Saturday and they're going to come back and everyone's going to turn up and play that style. And when we're missing players, it's going to be difficult, but no fair play to Ghana. I think he's, he's come in. I think not a lot of people were really clued on to who he was and what he was all about, but they give a sort of memo about what he was about. And I think a lot of Swindon fans just like to see a good style of football and we were watching it on Saturday and people behind were just going, oh, they were just loving the way that we were trying to move the ball properly. And they, they were saying it was Ghana ball for the goal. And you know what I mean? And it, it, this is the way it should be. And I love watching a good style of football. And whether that means we concede a few goals from it, then so be it. But it's so much better than the drivel that we all had to put up with. And fair play to him. You know what I mean? He's got the confidence. And he, he takes the flack. If they make a mistake, he doesn't let the players take it. He takes the flak on board and says, this is the way that I want us to play and this is the way I'm going to set us up. So long may it continue. And as long as it's entertaining to watch, that's all that matters. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Adam, there, there was the the big announcement for Swindon Town Women, which I'll give you a, a, a section in just a moment to, to obviously talk us through and, and what big news that was. But I just want to um, congratulate everyone involved in helping raise just over 11,000 that went to... Prospect Hospice as well. That was, I think, that was announced today, wasn't it? All the checks yeah, yeah. over today. It was a that's a great effort from everyone involved, and uh, and so well done um, to all those who who were able to contribute towards that figure and helped in organisation of various bits to do that. It's it's a massive effort and very much uh, very much deserved as well for the Prospect Hospice. Um, so yeah, Adam, the the big news coming out of uh, Swinning Town Women. Yeah. So on. Um... Thursday we uh, we we were called to a club meeting um, uh, we were told there was a special guest um, but funnily enough um, I was training on the Wednesday at Foundation Park and then Clem was doing his uh, five aside that he does on the pitch next to us and he, he came up and, and I was chatting to the chairman and he was talking about the logistics and then Clem goes oh what time am I due to come in tomorrow and you just see the chairman go Oh, uh, we weren't going to let everybody know that, uh, <laughs> that Clem was there, even though everybody kind of knew that that's what it was going to be. But yeah, it was fantastic. And I think what was more important um, for us in terms of the women's structure was the fact that Clem and Rob 
took time out of their evening, half seven at night, you know, to come in and, you know, they met probably, I think it was about 10 of my players were there. Um, they met, you know, a lot of the first team and the development squad, the coaches, they took time to do photos out on the pitch and stuff like that. And it's like we were mentioning earlier with that community feel of having, you know, we've now, it was, it was needed. You know, I've said it for years in women's football that, you will always grab more of a community if you bring your women's team inside the club. Um, and that's not necessarily saying that you have to play on the counter ground. It's just, you know, that we're not wearing the badge just because we're a team in Swindon now, you know, we're, we're wearing a badge because we're very much part of the club. And then obviously the added bonus to that is the 31st of October, the Exeter city game is going to be at the county ground. Um, Rob made it pretty well, made it pretty clear that his ambition is to have, the women in the county ground at some, you know, at, at some point, which is, which is great. I mean, we're only fourth tier, so we don't get a massive attendance, but you know, our, our attendance nearly tripled when we last had a game at the county ground, which was against Paul, um, you know, that was a, a couple of years ago now, two or three years ago now. And um, so, yeah, it's fantastic. New, the club's buzzing. Um, you, you know, obviously for my under 16s, it was great to hear from the owner that they're really part of that family. And they use the word family quite a lot you know, the Swindon Town family, you know, we're using their facilities in terms of the gym and the, you know, the function rooms, et cetera, and all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get the same kit, um, but <laughs> we're not going to get the stripy home shirts, but um, I think that's more of a Puma issue as opposed to um, Swindon not letting us, but hopefully going forward, we'll have the, you know, the same kit and all of that kind of stuff. You'd think with the, um, playing at the counter ground and using the facilities as well that it would attract the better quality of players as well to the club um, as well as uh, the money that the club gets Swindon Town men's team get through um, their success which they're probably going to get over the upcoming years that will filter through to the ladies team as well so uh, a strong men's team will ultimately equal a, a strong ladies team yeah and I think and Swindon and playing you know, and having the uh, having the gym there, the facilities, and the foundation part for the training, I think that's all good. I think yeah, that's... and I think I think to be fair, it's um, you know we're not stupid. We know that the club could be unright, you know, unraveling debts that we didn't know about. So we know that you know we're taking small steps, but they're small steps in the right direction at the end of the day. Mm. Um, and I think you know we were we've now been in the program a couple of times. I made a star appearance in the program. Uh, on Saturday with with my team after our game at Malksham with the awkward picture with Harry Parsons <laughs> um, but the um but yeah no it's it's great news it's it's a massive it's a ma it's a, it was a reason I was looking I wanted to come back into Swindon town um after many years in women's football I thought that this felt like a good time to come back and I'm glad I went with my gut instinct but yeah and obviously they had a positive result on the pitch on Sunday as well we beat Paul in the um league cup um, so which they needed a good you know they needed a win under their belts we had a bit of a changed team with my under 16s were still waiting for a match because we were supposed to have our all singing all dancing first game on Saturday and then the opposition um, had COVID um, so, oh, no. so we, we ended up not playing um, but yeah so hopefully this Saturday but all looking good um, I'm sure I think this is going to be not just for the women's setup. you know we could be looking in the next five, six years, it'd be great. Things like disabled football, all of that kind of stuff yeah. would just be fantastic to get into the club. And you mentioned the game at the county ground, obviously hopeful that as many people get down there and support as possible. Um, I presume that they must, have they got a game this weekend as well, Adam? Uh, yes, I think. Do we want to fill the gap? Because normally you're prepared with this. Do you want us to just I'm not, talk? Not, I'm, normally, <laughs> I'm normally, yeah, fill the gap. Talk about something else for a minute. I did know. I did know as well. How bad is that? Make sure to have a listen on the podcast. Isn't just sat, here, sat there in silence. Like, oh, just, who likes big pasties then? Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So the McDonald's monopoly. How's everyone getting on? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. If, if, if McDonald's would like to sponsor us, we can talk about your monopoly. Yes. Well, the problem yeah. is McDonald's. The, the rumor is McDonald's were interested in sponsoring us until Warren came on with a KFC cup. So if KFC <laughs> would like to. <laughs> there was there was my purposeful uh product placement there because the Broken. first team 
first team aren't playing this weekend. So I obviously <laughs> knew that. Uh, so, <laughs> thank you, thank you to McDonald's. Thank you to McDonald's for sponsoring us and allowing us a product placement. <laughs> if ever there was an accusation that this was a slick operation and not done completely on the fly, this proves all the doubters wrong. It proves why I didn't know we had one. <laughs> I think it's safe to say... And next that. week we'll be talking about Woody's resignation from Swindon Town Women's Football Club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rich, Rich, please come back. <laughs> having, having done an out, uh, plea to announce, Adam Wood has returned. <laughs> I know they got this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, gents, as always, this has been a pleasure. I think that that concludes our, our catch up. Unless there is anything else anyone wants to add at this juncture, no. Surprise, Je- Ben has not gone. Johnny fucking Williams at least once yet, but I'm disappointed. Oh, that's a that's a Ned thing. Ned's almost coined that now, hasn't he? Oh, no. <laughs> um, Where is Ned anyway? <laughs> what are we looking? Not his keepers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing he's with Joe somewhere doing something more important than being here. Or well, maybe us. he was the bird going around. We'll change that next report to um, where's Ned. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag where's Ned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's, where's Ned? Ned? Yeah. Put that on Twitter five three when we share it. We'll, uh, we'll be posting where's Ned. Please send your answers in for Thursday's Where's Ned poll. We'll be posting where's Ned. Please send your answers in. Funniest ones will get a retweet. If they're not funny... We will will still show it love because you've taken time to interact. Um, Gents, thank you very much. Uh, For anyone watching, listening, as always, the invite is there. If you would like to get involved, drop us a message on Facebook or on Twitter. We would love to have you on. Um, But until next week, it's good night from me and good night from them.